Hello, I'm Bruce Shane, and today in Homemade Science, we're going to take a look at my tennis ball cannon. Now, the cannon itself is simply a number of cans that have been taped together. My projectile is going to be this tennis ball, but before I load it into the barrel, I want to get this wet, otherwise it'll burn during firing. So to load it, I simply put it in the opening of the can, and just use a long stick, and push it down. Now the ball is actually sitting about right here inside the chamber. Now there's several fuels that we can use for this, but I like using lighter fluid, and I'm going to add about 10 drops to this little firing hole here at the end of the barrel. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now I'm going to rotate this can to distribute the fuel on the inside of that chamber, and that's going to help it evaporate just a little bit quicker. So we're just about ready to go. I think I want to try it in this little cart. It's got a good set of wheels, and it's easy to load the barrel in and out of this frame. There we go. Now let's see it in action. Two, three. Three. One, two, three. Explosions. Two, three. Whoa! Now this cannon on the wooden frame has quite a bit of mass to it. I have another cannon that's mounted on this plastic frame, and it's much lighter. So what kind of difference do you think we'll see with this cannon versus this one? Now we can also fire it in the vertical position. Uh, so I have this stand here that's going to hold the barrel straight up and down. Now I find when I fire outside, I do get a lot of misfires. I'm yeah. scared. It's gonna work. David. Fail. To get around that, I'm going to use this old gas grill igniter. The ball and the fuel have already been added, and next I'll take the tips of the igniter, insert it into the can, and then cover it with a piece of duct tape. Sealing over the fire hole keeps the wind from disturbing that fuel air mixture that's inside that chamber. One, two, three. Now to make this cannon, we're going to start with a barrel, and we're going to make it out of these four cans. Now I really like these cans that asparagus spears comes in. They're a little bit longer, the tennis ball fits in it nice and snug, and there's no ridges in it, which means the barrel inside is nice and smooth. Now the first can is a little bit different. I still left the bottom on it and the top part was cut out with a saw so that it has ridge on it which actually keeps the tennis ball from going into that chamber. If you can't cut this hole out, another possibility is simply cut off the lid, drill four holes, and then simply thread a wire from one side to the other so that it crisscrosses in the center. You can tie it at the one side. Either method works fine. Now this is a combustion can, and I'm going to reinforce this with a little bit of extra tape, just for safety. Issues. I've already added a small firing hole, and now I'm simply going to tape the cans together. You can use aluminum tape or duct tape, either one would work fine. Mm -hmm. 
Well, the barrel's finished. Let's go give this one a try. One, two, three. It worked. Now, my reason for mounting this cannon on a movable frame is I thought this would be a good example of Newton's third law. This tells us that forces are equal in size, but opposite in direction. Motion can be a response to these forces. There are always going to be two objects feeling the same amount of force, but in opposite directions. Our force in this case is the expanding gas. Newton's second law tells us that the acceleration depends on the amount of force that's applied and the amount of mass that's being moved. The ball and the cannon both feel the same amount of force, but since the ball has a small mass, it's going to have a much larger acceleration. The cannon with the large mass is going to have a much smaller acceleration. I'm sure by now you've noticed the alternating strips on the floor. Well, if we record the movement with a high-speed camera, we can go back and calculate the speed of the ball and also the speed of the cannon. In this trial, the ball speed was 21.6 meters per second, and the cannon speed was 1.2 meters per second. Now let's start with the plastic cart. This trial we got a ball speed of 34.3 meters per second and a cart speed of 4.5 meters per second. After trying this several times we found that the speeds were not very consistent from one trial to the next. I also put all the pieces on a balance. I wanted to compare the ratio of the masses to the ratio of the speeds. I thought they'd be a little bit closer than what I found. A few factors that might explain the discrepancy include friction in the wheels, not all the gases were contained within that barrel, While reviewing the tapes, we also notice that the barrel doesn't remain seated against the back of the cart. It actually moves forward as it's firing. Does this have an effect on the speed of the cart? We're not sure. It's actually something that we'll have to test. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing my tennis ball cannon, and I have some new ideas that I want to try for this. So hopefully we'll do an update in the near future. In the meantime, I'd like to thank you for stopping in and come back and see him again. Okay, bye.